In this video, I'll be uh, saying goodbye to one of my favorite Chibumpkin goldfish. Unfortunately, it's dying and it's, well, it's the most humane thing to do is to put it down. So I'll bury you the uh, part of me putting it down and we'll see if we can figure out what caused this. Hi there, and welcome back to Step Aquatics. Uh, this isn't the happiest topic in the world. We've all been there. We've all lost favorite fish, and we don't always know why. Uh, you know, most of us aren't microbiologists or have degrees in ichthyology. I'm surprised I was able to say that. Uh, I wish I was a marine biologist <laughs> or an ichthyologist. Either way, uh, I couldn't save this uh, favorite fish of mine. This is the uh, blue shabumpkin that you can see here. Um, it developed a swim bladder issue. At least I, what I determined to be a swim bladder issue. Um, see, goldfish are more susceptible to uh, swim bladder issues. Uh, predominantly the fancier ones because of the body shape. But uh, even shabumpkins and common goldfish can get swim bladder issues mainly because of their esophagus and their swim bladders are so closely related to each other and so close in proximity that they can take on excess air. Uh, sometimes that's because of uh, overfeeding uh, from feeding from the top. That's why a lot of uh, fancy goldfish feeders will only feed their fish sinking goldfish food. I feed mine a mix of both and you know over the years I've lost a couple of my favorite fish uh, to swim bladder issues and maybe I will have to uh, feed them predominantly sinking goldfish food. I'm not sure but I'm going to take a look at this uh, fish uh, in, in some detail and um, if you don't want to see gore, don't look. Um, I, I'm not here to gross anyone out but I wanted to take a look, good look at the gills. Uh, I want to make sure the gills were okay because you can see in this video uh, the fish seems to be breathing okay. It's lying on its uh, up, upside right, lying on the substrate before it, it had been near the top and it, it looked like it was almost gulping air. So I wanted to see what the gills looked like. If they were gray or even pinkish, then I'd be cons more concerned. So I really wanted to get a close look at the gills to make sure there was no gill issues that could uh, affect the rest of my uh, fish. I treated the water in the uh, tank uh, with methylene blue. I'd previously done a salt treatment and had done a water change before that. This has been going on some time and now it's to the point where I can't help this fish. The best thing I can do is to put it down. And that's the right thing to do. So I dispatched it quickly uh, and painlessly. It was it was probably going to die within the next day or two. And, uh, you know, I just knew I couldn't uh, help it any further. So the best thing I could do is put it out of its misery. Uh, so in wanting to get a good look at the gills, I did have to, well, remove its head to fully inspect the gills. And I did that. You can see here, and I'm not going to show you how I did that. Then I wanted to take a good look at the swim bladder. You see the swim bladder is made up of two sections uh, and there seems to be a like a bit of a contortion in this which leads me to believe that there was a swim bladder disease or issue on this fish and not to mention that I had uh, sex this wrong uh, was also full of eggs not to the point where it was impacted with eggs but uh, it would have been able to breed this year which is a true shame uh, it's a beautiful fish with beautiful finnage, and I had great hopes for this fish. It's a truly a heartbreaking experience uh, when you raise these uh, fish from fry up and, you know, you keep them over the years thinking, this is going to be my next uh, generation uh, show fish or broodstock, and I had such high hopes for this fish. But if it, you know, was passing down a, an issue, I would have had to think about it. See, I had a similar one that uh, acted very similar, uh, would eat, feed fine, eat fine. I couldn't 
uh, cure the swim bladder issue. And uh, it was out in a pond, and the pond froze over, and the poor thing suffocated because it would gulp air. Um, anyways, I didn't want this to happen. I've had uh, probably three fish, maybe four fish over the last seven or eight years uh, die of swim bladder. And swim bladder disease can be caused multiple things from poor diet, which I know my fish don't have a poor diet. Uh, the only thing is I do feed them some top surface uh, foods, which could cause it, which I really don't think so in this case. Um, poor water quality. I keep on top of my water changes and filter changes. And none of the other fish were reacting, so I, I knew it wasn't a nitrate spike. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's truly disheartening. Uh, wow. I don't know where to end on that. It's just, you know, if you're going to lose a fish, the best thing you can do is learn why you lost that fish. And through basically a fish autopsy, for lack of better words, I learned that one, you know, that the gills were fine, which was the major concern of mine, and that there was a, a problem with the swim bladder. Um, there were, through other inspections, you know, there was no fungus, no uh, parasite issues. This was strictly swim bladder issue, and I'm going to keep a closer eye. Yes, I know I can treat with Epsom salts and through an antibacterial, and I'd done virtually everything I could have, but it just wasn't meant to be. So take it from me. Uh, we all have been there, but the least we could do is learn from our experiences and mistakes and move on. Uh, you know, I want to take you through the whole experience, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. This one is bad, but hopefully we... Got some good out of it. Thanks again, everyone. We'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.